third floor, the choir chamber, and the echo chamber is back here too. So you kind of turn sideways a little bit. So what we're trying to do is we have a pipe that won't play. So we're trying to sort out. Go ahead and play that note again that doesn't work. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I hear, I think I hear the rush of the air. It was getting there for a second. I think it's the piccolo. Okay, I bet there's something stuck in the reed. I'm on my way up now to check it. Oh, okay, you're coming here. I'll show you which one it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dirty mess. But we'll figure that out. Ah, uh, let's see. Hmm. <laughs> That's all it was. See, the, the little piece of metal had shifted a tiny bit, so the reed wasn't playing. The little curved piece of metal had shifted a tiny bit, so it was hitting the reed in a different spot, so it couldn't vibrate correctly. So now I have to tune it. You want to pop it, it back, back in, in and then okay. I'll, we'll do our two-person routine and tune it. I'll turn the flute back on, and when you yep. hear the beat pattern, okay. just gently turn it left and right. you're seeing, this organ, mm -hmm. is the original one. There was nothing better in the world when he had this one installed. This was absolutely it. And we can tell from the letters that he wrote to Aeolian and they sent back that he was sort of pushing them, I'll say that nicely, driving them crazy, uh, pushing them more and more to make things even better. He wanted silence when the organ wasn't playing. He didn't want to hear the air rushing. He didn't want air leaks, and he wanted the clarinet to sound like a clarinet. He wanted the French horn to sound like a French horn, and so forth. None of this organ stuff. He wanted an orchestra in his house, controlled by one person. This is the preset panel. Mm -hmm. So the organist could come down here and choose um, for each of the six presets what, uh, what ranks they want to play. Up on the panel, or excuse me, up on the console, there's, there's also um, uh, controls labeled A, B, C, D, E, F. So the organist could choose one of those and whatever they've preset down in the basement, now those ranks are, will play. Uh, unfortunately, somewhere along the line, uh, this entire panel has been disconnected. So there's one of the projects is to, to re-enable this and, and, and bring, just bring it back to life. Uh, just in the last few months, uh, we managed to get the rest of the harp to play it when, when we got started, only half of the harp played. Uh, so, so now the, the rest of it's played by, by figuring out on this, where is the harp, <laughs> and making the connection again. So that's a big part of the, of the time investment early on, is, is just to get all of this documented as to where are the warriors coming from, where are they going to, and what do they control. This is a... This is a Gantt chart of Plan A, which has got, again, all of those tasks. Uh, and here's how much time each one takes. Each, each column is a week. Right. So you're saying the total for all of this is only 32,280? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. For 70, 70 weeks later, $32,280 later. Okay, so right. what that's also saying to me, though, is that if this is really true, I have enough to get us started and to do some of this out of my own account and stuff, but then when we get down over here, that's a bigger mm -hmm. jump. I don't have this, so but it gives me some weeks to try to bring that Connor, in. And I'm the curator of the George Eastman House and the George Eastman Legacy Collection. For the past 28 years that I've been here at the museum, we've been slowly trying to restore and repair George Eastman's Aeolian pipe organ, which he installed in 1905 when he first moved in. 
It's been a slow process. Um, we have used a variety of um, great volunteers from the community. The first group was the Rochester Theatre Organ Society who came weekly for many years to help us hook up at least some of the main chambers in the organ role player. We now have a wonderful group of volunteers um, that are helping us to kind of work on other sections of the pipe organ. It's a very long, sort of arduous process and stuff, thank goodness we have um, the help of volunteers who are passionate about the pipe organ to help us reach our goal. But we also need funds too to be able to um, pay Parsons Pipe Organ Company who has um, for years, including during Mr. Eastman's time, maintained and repaired the organ. We need to pay them to do some tuning and some major leathering work. So we are looking for help to try to um, put money in our kitty so that the organ restoration can really move forward. We're now working on...